Hey guys, this is Normandy, a picture perfect example of a classic northern blue tongue skink. And I've raised him from birth to over a year old now, and he is just amazing. And today we're going to talk about three common problems that new or beginner blue tongue skink owners experience. This episode is brought to you by Cage's Custom Reptile Enclosures, combining modern beauty with functionality to create the perfect home for your pet. Check them out at reptilecages.com. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former professional zookeeper, lifelong reptile fanatic, and blue tongue skink breeder. And you're watching Reptile Mountain TV, evidence-based, captive bred, and animal-focused. So problem or issue number one that's usually experienced is bugs in the enclosure. Now this happens usually from a piece of cage furniture or the substrate. Yes, the substrate. If you're using mulch, even Zoom Meds Forest Floor, that is wood from the wild. And it's ground up, chopped up into little pieces for you, but if you get it moist and warm, it is the perfect environment for whatever eggs may have been laid in there before you even bought it, before it was even mulched up, to hatch. Now I have had consistent issues with cypress mulch of any type that if I don't bake it, it will end up with either little wood mites, little gnats, or other types of isopods and bugs. Now if you are trying to do a bioactive environment, that's fantastic. But if you don't want bugs, because sometimes they end up in the water bowl and it's annoying, some people even get confused and think it might be mites. But bugs in the enclosure is usually caused by cage furniture that was not cleaned properly, a used enclosure that wasn't cleaned properly, or um, the substrate not being sterilized. So what I do to avoid it, because I don't like the gnats, because it usually comes with gnats. It never fails. If I don't bake the mulch first, I get gnats. So what I do is I just take a little tin foil baking pan, I put the mulch in it, and I bake it for 30 minutes at 275. If it's moist, that's okay. Moisture and heat together is more effective in an oven for killing this purpose than not, as far as studies show. And so I just put it at 275, and I leave it for 30 minutes. I pull it out, let it cool down, and then put it in the closure. And since I've been doing that, zero gnats. Every time I don't, I get gnats and other bugs in the enclosure. So that's one thing that some folks encounter, and they sometimes think it's mites, because oh no, there's black bugs, but it's not the skink that's given it, it's actually the wood or the furniture in the enclosure that's actually causing the bug problem. Problem number two that's pretty common among new keepers is runny poos. So usually a couple weeks to a month after they go to a new home, they've been feeding them consistently the exact same food instead of rotating it up and that t tends to cause a irritation on their bowels and they end up getting runny poo. So being an opportunistic omnivore generalist, these guys need quite a bit of variety. So rotating different types of food such as instead of turkey, uh, turkey and quail flavored uh, cat food, feed a rabbit flavored cat food and then feed maybe uh, a duck flavored cat food and maybe switch up the brands a little bit here and there to give variety. On my care sheet, if you follow the link down in the description, I have a list of foods that I rotate. It's not a selection for you to choose one, which some people accidentally think that's what it's for. No, it's those are all of them that I'm feeding and I'm feeding them in rotation because a good rotation helps keep their digestive tract from developing a sensitivity. Now, sometimes runny poo means something else and it could be something else. Mostly with captive born and bred clean animals that don't have parasites, um, it's a the runny poo issue is either too much calcium sometimes you put on the food because that can upset their stomachs. Sometimes it's a water change and you have a different type of water going on or it could be a lack of variety, a lack of rotation of different types of foods. Usually as soon as folks start to rotate the foods, the, the uh, runny poos clear up right away. So give that a try. The last problem is he hides all the time and I've given him a week or a month or three months to get used to me and he's still hiding. Okay, let me see a picture of your enclosure. So what happens usually is you have a great, huge enclosure, one little bitty hide, and then 
that's it. And it looks kind of like an empty basketball court, wide open spaces, you know, like the Dixie Chicks would sing about. That's your problem. Typically, what I discovered and what we learned at the zoo when we were keeping animals that were considerably shy, the more hides and the more concealment that you can provide, the actual more often the animal will come out and be more visible because they feel that they have more opportunities to be safe if they need it. So they kind of like to have that plan B kind of attitude where can I go this way or can I go that way to hide as opposed to if I come out all the way over here, I have to go all the way over there to hide. And that's not typically what they want. They typically are far more secure when you provide multiple hides or multiple areas uh, for concealment, such as putting in some plants where they can weave in between it. They feel a little bit more secure that way and they're more inclined to come out and bask among that than if you just have it open and barren. So multiple hides or multiple places where they can hide or feel concealed will definitely improve the chances of your animal wanting to be out and about as opposed to hiding. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I wanna say thank you to my pa patrons. You guys are amazing. Making Reptile Mountain reach all over the world with this type of uh, kind of semi-educational material. I really appreciate you guys and your support and everyone, if you are a subscriber, a viewer, we are still growing as a channel, which is amazing, considering that we're kind of a niche or a niche channel, which, you know, we're just basically focused on blue tongues. And so that's cool that we're growing. Hey, if you want to, you can hit the like or the subscribe button if you haven't already, and be sure to share this video, let others know about it. And I just want to say again, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for some future videos we've got coming up that are gonna be kind of fun, change it up a little bit. And as always, guys, remember, opinion is not fact.